Good morning, this is Blair with Live and Learn Gardening and I am so excited to start planting my fall crop here in Texas. It is the beginning of September, well not the beginning I guess, now it's, it's the 12th of September and I am getting ready to plant some things. So I did some seeds a few weeks ago and now they are totally ready to go and I'm going to show you what they're looking like and how healthy they are. They're fabulous. I'm so glad I used that Vermont compost. These are the healthiest seedlings I've ever had for sure. Um, I did indoor lighting and I've just been bringing them out in the sun the last couple of days and then today it's overcast and that is the perfect time to be planting some uh, seedlings that have already been exposed to a little bit of sun. They got full sun for a couple of hours yesterday and today we've got overcast skies so i think it's the perfect time to get them in the ground all right let's get started i'm going to turn you around and show you how well these seedlings are doing in the first place let's talk through these seedlings these are my um edmondson cucumbers they're going to be the white ones these are the little potato cucumbers they came up really nicely solid germination all the way through um i got i think i planted two seeds of each of these and pretty much all of the seeds, I think I planted ah, I planted three of these, um, two of these, and pretty much all of the seeds came up. I mean, even got kind of spares. Um, I don't think I need a ton of spare, but go ahead and plant that guy anyway, just because it's there. Um, and I've moved a few of these over just as I realized, like, I'm going to take that guy out, this guy out, because I've got three healthy plants now and they need all the nutrition that the soil has to offer um this one also and he's so close to the other plant i can't really save him um i'm just going to save this one take out his friend there so now i've got one two three of the edmondson cucumbers one two and there will be three of the um little potato cucumbers uh, one of the things that i want to point out here is the roots on the bottom when you see a ton of roots coming out like this one that definitely means that you need to get these guys in the ground asap i wanted to put these out a week ago but the weather was just not co cooperating um but these are my squashes they're the ones that really need to go in the ground the other thing that really needed to go in the ground was my um was these i'll show you i'll, I'll patch in the video of me putting these in the ground as quickly as possible um these are my kale these are definitely not ready to go in the ground i'm going to wait until these form you know real solid plants before i put them in the ground i may transplant it to a few into another place that sort of thing we'll see um these brussels sprouts uh these are the baker creek ones and i really thought because it was such an old seed packet they weren't going to come up but as i was waiting and waiting for these other things to come up these guys finally came up and i'm so excited because i now have one two three strong uh, seeds versus these were the Long Island ones and they came up but they got really leggy I didn't have the light on them just right at the beginning and um, then several of them I had the light on too much and they got scorched so uh, I'm really glad these guys came up came up late and in time to get really good sunlight and, and all that um, this is just one of my these cucumbers I transplanted it over here because I really didn't think that the Brussels sprouts were going to come up um, this is my regular Genoese basil. I'm just going to let it cluster like that. I'm going to put it into, this one got scorched too. Um, I'm going to just put it into some pots and let it kind of go wild. Um, I don't really like putting it in the green stock. I don't feel like it does as well there. I feel like it does much better when I put like two or three of these in one pot and just kind of let them go. Um, this is my basil that doesn't bolt. This is the cardinal basil, I believe. So it may have been two seeds coming over here. The germination rate on these was not very good, but um, these were some saved seeds and it's always worth trying. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually bought the seed for this one. I just started saving seed from the first um, flush of seeds that I got last year when I bought this particular, um, I think it's Cardinal Basil. And then let's see here. This is my squash. Back here's the spaghetti squash. I'm very excited about these. I may actually have to go and pull out my um, my sweet potato so I can fit these in a place where they'll have lots of room to sprawl. Uh, and then this is my scallop squash. These guys were so amazing, so tasty, kind of a nutty flavor uh, this spring that I really want to try them again. I'm probably going to let them basically take over my whole squash bed over there, and um, I'm going to put that netting back on to... Uh, push off the vine borers, but those guys got to go on the ground probably today. 
Um, and these I put just one seed in each hole and they all came up. So really great germination there. Now, um, try to move these guys over so you can see these right down here, these little guys, that's my parsley. And I could not be more excited that that parsley came up. Um, the parsley seeds are notoriously difficult to germinate, or at least that's been my experience. And these pretty much all came up and they came up beautifully. So I'm very excited about that. Um, one of the things that I haven't started yet and I plan to start later in the season, probably my next round of seeds is going to be celery. I cannot wait to start celery. I absolutely love having celery around the house. It's just so easy to go pick a sprig when you need to put it in a meal. Um, but this parsley is going to be great for the butterflies and I just need to go through and kind of thin these seedlings out. Um, that was just pulling off one of the seedlings. You can either pinch them at the base or this one just pulled straight out with the whole root just for fun. I'm going to plant it right here and just see what happens. Um, probably nothing, but eh, you know, go for it. Um, and this is cauliflower. It looks pretty healthy. I probably need to thin these guys a little bit. Um, but I've got one, two, three healthy pods over here. Let's see if I could, I feel the roots tearing, so it's probably not going to transplant well, but I'm just going to pop that guy over there. It's always good to have backup cauliflower, I feel like. Um, now I'm going to be so confused as to what all these plants are, but anyway, that's okay. Pull this one out, put it over here. I'll be able to look back at this video and see what I did. That's cauliflower, cauliflower, parsley. Um, uh, pretty sure that was, um, one of the cucumbers. I don't remember which one. See, this is why you don't do this. <laughs> or you can do it, but it's just like rolling the dice. Um, these are my bunching onions. I haven't really tried these before. Really excited to get them in the ground. I'll probably stick a couple. Um, I noticed their roots are actually coming out a little on the bottom. So I'll probably take some of the kind of worst defenders and um, like this one, pop it out and put it in this tower, this tower garden over here just to see how it does. I need to find a home for these guys, but... Um, but that's always a process in the fall garden, figuring out, yeah, see there's, that's not root locked yet though. That's, that's still okay. Um, to see the roots are still loose. They're not turning back and in on themselves. Um, that is okay. So I'm just gonna pop this in my tower garden real quick. All right, we'll just find a spot for it. And this seems like as good of a spot as any. Stick a little hole. Pop it in there and see how it does. I've got lots and lots of backups, so I can try these in a few places and if they don't do well, we'll try something else. It's always the process with gardening. You try something, every garden's a little different. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it does not work out at all, and that's fine. All right, let's go um, put up the netting so that we can put these scallop guys in. Actually, first we're gonna jump back and plant these green beans. They were super, super root bound. Uh, really need to go on the ground. Again, I would have planted them at least a week ago, but the weather was not cooperating. It was just way too hot. So again, these are the kind that don't love root, you know, messing with the roots, but they were so root bound. I just needed to tease out at least a couple of roots. They know they have extra space once I get them in uh, their new home. So where I'm going to put them is in this tower garden. And I just put the labels and then I put two decks to each other for the beans that I wanted to put in. Um, I'm just tucking the plants in and I'm not putting a lot of soil over the top, just kind of just the depth of the plant and just moving the soil a little out of the way and then popping the plant in. And it's actually really just as easy as that. Um, it's kind of fun to plant an already pre-sprouted plant you're not just waiting for the bean to come up for multiple days. Currently looking for another spot with two cells next to each other so I can put the um, Next, the last two bean sprouts next to each other. These were strawberry plants that obviously did not survive. Doing a little cleaning out here so that there won't be um, branches blocking the light. And I think I'm going to pick that spot right there. So go get my bean sprouts. These are the, I think they're the Royal Burgundy. Um, yeah, the Royal Burgundy. So those are the purple ones. My daughter loves purple as you might remember, so I always try to do purple. Very root bound, loosen it up just a tiny bit here. Um, again, trying not to disturb the roots too much, but also, yeah, they're they're a little late in the ground. I'm probably gonna go put some more um, 
bean seeds in this tower. Uh, maybe just fill up the whole thing and okay, hopefully we get some bean green beans this year. Um, but again, it's pretty simple. Just move the soil aside, pop these guys in, and hope for the best. Hoping I get lots and lots of green beans this year. Um, one big thing I probably need to do is go back and fertilize these uh, just to make sure that they have the best chance at growth. Um, this is my other tower. It just looked kind of depleted to me, so I think I'm going to add some extra compost to it. The soil just looks drier and just less nutrient rich, so I'll have to do that next too. Now we are back to the scallop squash. All right, I've got my netting. First, I'm going to remove the old stuff that's laying over right now, and then I'm going to add this, and we'll see how it looks. I actually need some clips. I'll be right back. Removing this old netting was actually a lot more work than I thought. I had really secured it at the bottom here, and uh, especially with this bar in the way of me trying not to squish or compact the soil, it was actually kind of a challenge to get this guy out, but I eventually got it, and it was so full of holes. I was really glad to remove it. What I'm doing here is first attaching the netting to the very front. I have some metal stakes that I stapled in, and you'll see later I add a couple of extra metal staples to attach the clips to along the front. The goal here is just to keep out the vine borers and it's not secure enough to keep out a squirrel or something like that. This is just a bug netting to keep out the bugs. I also had to re-set up kind of those metal grates at the back and now I'm attaching the very other bottom of the netting to the bottom of the back there because a bug could very easily fly through the fence and through those metal grates to get to the plant so I actually need it to loop all the way around and what I'm doing right here is looping or using the other side of the netting and attaching it to the bottom of those metal grates back there and then Finally, I'm going to start attaching at the top. It gets kind of tricky here because this is actually a two and a half foot deep bed and I am not very tall. So getting everything attached to the back was actually a little bit of a challenge. Um, just sort of a, a feat of kind of standing, standing at just the edge or standing up on top of the boards and stuff just to, to get everything attached. Also, there's one place where I had a hole in the netting and so it's a little bunched. That's why it's there's a little gap there at the bottom at the front. I had to pinch some of the uh, netting together so that it wouldn't, um, yeah, see, I'm worried about that. I'm like, okay, how am I gonna fix it? So I had to uh, lower the top to get it all to work. There were also a couple of places where I didn't have enough places to secure the netting to, especially because I'm trying to do it uh, so tight there right along the wood. Um, so I went and got a uh, stapler and I actually stapled over a stick and then pulled the stick out from under it. So the staple was sticking out of the wood so that I could get the, um, the clips to clip the netting to the wood. Now we're ready to get started planting. I'm planting my scallop squash here. Um, get you guys all set up so you can see. These guys are a little bit root bound. I really wanted to get them in about a week ago, but it was just way too hot. These seedlings would not have survived a 105 degree planting cycle. So I'm loosening up the roots just a tiny bit. I don't want to disturb them too much. Squash don't really like it when you disturb their roots, but these were particularly root bound. So there were several things I needed to do to get this soil ready uh, for planting. And I'd already put some compost on a couple weeks ago and that part was okay but the soil underneath was pretty dry so I wanted to make sure to pretty thoroughly um, moisten the soil before I put my plant in. I also wanted to put some, I put some trifecta which is a, um, a organic fertilizer that my gardener has in and what I did here is also 
um, I kind of put the squash plant on a little bit of a mound of soil. So it's a little bit higher than the soil around it. Um, that's what I'm doing with the second one over there in the corner. One of the big things about squash plants is they don't like to have wet feet, so to speak. Um, I am watering the soil here, but I think it's kind of essential to make sure that, um, that the ground is wet, but not too wet. There's always a balance here, right? So there I'm just loosening the root ball of this guy too, I'm putting him in the ground. Oh, a little camera mishap there. Um, so all I'm doing here is getting the soil wet, cleaning off my hands, um, making sure that I put fertilizer in, and then I'm going to move to the other side. The great news is just after planting these, the clouds stayed and the rain just came down in a nice steady pour for multiple days. You'll notice that this soil is actually draining really well. I have the faucet running on it and there's no pools of water forming, which is fantastic sign. It means that this soil is draining really well. This squash seedling is a much more ideal phase of growth. See, there's only a couple of roots on it. They haven't started turning up. They're still kind of poking out. This is probably more the correct stage. I would want to plant one of these. And um, what I'm putting on there is that's actually vermicompost from my vermicompost bin, um, adding that to the soil to help with moisturization. Um, and then I'm also going to put in um, a few more plants over here. It's not going to be more squash plants, um, but I am adding vermicompost to all of my squash and kind of ruffling that soil in because this stuff is really good at helping with moisture retention. And what I noticed in this bed is there was definitely a problem with moisture retention. And so I wanted to kind of supercharge this bed with lots of microorganisms and uh, worms in particular. So the nice thing about vermicompost is it has really great nutrients and it also has baby worm or worm eggs in it. Um, here I decided to kind of plant some, or it's kind of suddenly, uh, to plant some of the um, bunching onions. I, I know there's not gonna be a lot of space in this bed once the squash take off, but I figured I could put a couple of bunching onions in here and just kind of see how they do. They can handle a decent amount of shade, I believe, um, at least once the, the scallops scallop uh, squash grow in. So I am looking forward to just seeing how these guys do. I'm also kind of separating them out a little, just giving them all a little more space. That'll help them get bigger bulbs on the bottom um, and just give them a little more space to grow. And all I did there was just tease the roots apart. They're pretty small weed, uh, pretty small roots. So it's pretty easy to just kind of tease them apart and then giving them a good water because the soil again was a lot drier than I would have liked. One of the most important aspects of this bed is I have to really keep this clipped and closed. I have had such bad problems with vine borers in the past that this just kind of getting everything closed up and locked down is really essential. Um, also, if I see any large gaps in the netting, I also tend to really focus on getting that closed as quickly as possible because uh, these vine borers are just, just brutal basically. <laughs> looks like a healthy plant. Now the question is whether we actually have any uh, sweet potatoes down there, but we're about to find out. I'm going to pick just a couple for dinner and I'm going to pick them from this side and I'm going to go ahead and plant one of my squashes in here just to give it a home on this nice cloudy day. Sometimes you have to remove the summer crop to get the uh, fall crop going. Zoom out a little. All right, let's just, I guess, start digging and see what we got. Okay, just dig right here. Hmm, nothing so far. Oh, it sucks for me when I these guys, so. Oh, worms. <laughs> actually kind of startled me. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is a potato plant. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, 
hello, where are the potatoes? Oh, there's something. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's a bee. Maybe I need to leave this plant in here a little longer. It is a very small tuber. Okay, I've got two babies so far. One, two. That's a stick. That's a stick. Really tiny tubers here. Let's see. The soil looks great though. Okay, let's see. This is connected to way over there. Granted, I could not be digging deep enough. My hands are going to be so muddy. Oh, there's one. Another little baby. Little baby. We need to leave these plants a little longer, which was my suspicion after that brutal hot summer. Granted, I don't exactly know which plant I just pulled up here. So, some of these vines are going to die off, and some of them are not. There's one. That's fine. Pretty intertangled. So what I'm doing here is just removing the vines from the plant that I pulled up and I am just clearing them out. Just going to go put whatever vines I pull out in the compost. Um, I can leave them there, but I didn't want to have a whole bunch of dead vines kind of lying around and I figured I'd grab at least the ones that I could very clearly tell came from this plant. Um, and I'm just kind of cleaning out the area around where I was planting or I'm planning to plant the squash plant giving myself um, kind of some sun and also getting rid of the well, what will soon be dead vines. Now we are planting the spaghetti squash. I'm just getting it a nice firm push into the soil and I've given it a little bit of breathing room through these vines. Another one of the places I want to plant a spaghetti squash is here. See how this vining has caused no problems whatsoever for this bed? It's not getting in my grass, it's great. So I'm gonna pull up some of the tubers on this side over here and plant one of my spaghetti squash. One thing I wanna note is these guys could be ready. They have been in the ground long enough. So it's 90 to I think 120 days, something like that. Um, kinda depends on your weather. We've had very hot, but very dry weather this summer. They love hot, dry, not so much. So let's see what we have. I was really excited to see how many uh, potatoes we got out of this bed. Just digging around here. Uh, it's really nice to have the shovel later. I dug up some without a shovel and the shovel is really helpful. You just don't want to stab the tubers. I did in one situation. That one looked pretty good. Still on the smaller side. I planted store-bought ones. That's closer to the actual length of the original one I planted but it wasn't nearly as thick. These ones almost look like they were going straight into the ground, almost like a carrot. Um, so I had lots of long, skinny ones. Um, they ended up tasting okay. I wouldn't say it's the best tasting uh, sweet potato I've ever had. Um, I almost wonder, I either left them in too long or not long enough, so I'm leaving a few more in a little bit longer. I'm pulling out the vines here to clear space for my spaghetti squash. Um, but I'm going to leave the rest of these in at least another week or two. Uh, we've got some good rain, cooler weather, see if that causes the sweet potatoes to bulk up anymore. And if not, we'll just dig them out and be good. Um, this was really interesting. Um, this sweet potato had actually started creating slips. And so I ended up with three really healthy looking strip slips that I ended up sticking in a jar later. Um, I was very surprised by this. It looks like one of the tubers had broken off and then started creating its own baby uh, sweet potato slips. So there's actually quite a few in number, if not size, of sweet potatoes off of this plant. Um, I'll show you here in a second. First, I'm going to get this spaghetti squash in the ground. I've cleared a spot for it. I think this will work out pretty well. There's a, a water um, dripper right there next to it, so I think that'll be a good spot for it and it'll have plenty of place to sprawl out. And I've also cleared kind of a sun path for it as well. So hopefully uh, this is a good spot for it. Ooh, camera fell down again. There's my sweet potato harvest. This is from the one I just did. There's three slips, a couple of these guys. Looking good. We'll see if they taste good. It's raining out here a little. 
these guys hosed off. I'm going to put Look at that, the morning glories. It's finally cool enough for them to stay open. How pretty. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope that this inspires you to get your fall garden started. Uh, there's lots of plants in the stores right now and the weather is finally turning in Texas where it's going to not be over 100, at least not consistently, hopefully. Um, it looks The forecast looks to be in the 90s. Today it's raining. You can see this beautiful rain behind me. Uh, a lot of my plants are kind of perking up. There's uh, my morning glories, which I just showed a clip of, are finally actually opening up. I would come out here at eight in the morning and it was already too hot and they'd already closed. So now I have these beautiful morning glories that I'll have all fall that I'm really excited about. Um, I did want to show you, I put the uh, sweet potato uh, slips that I found just in a glass of water. I just want to see, you know, how well they grow. I'm not really sure if I'm going to plant them anywhere. I might just put them in a pot, not necessarily to grow sweet potatoes, but Maybe I put them in like this pot over here or something because they're really pretty the way that uh, their vines go out. And hey, if I get some sweet potatoes, great. If not, I've got some some really pretty vines for the fall. Um, I don't know that there's enough time, uh, especially not enough hot time before the winter for me to grow these. Let's see, it's September, um, mid-September, uh, mid-October, mid-November, mid-December. 90 days, I just don't think they're gonna mature in that time, but I could have some really pretty vines in the meantime, so not the worst thing. Um, I was just so surprised to find them. Uh, anyway, I wanted to say thank you for hanging out, for bearing with me through the summer. It has been a brutal summer for sure. Um, I'm trying to get my channel out there to show people in Texas that you can grow, even despite the heat. We survived, even though it was 100 degrees uh, for, gosh, I don't know how many exactly ended up being, but way over 60 and almost all of July and all of August were 100 degree days. It was brutal. Um, so if you're still here, if you're still thinking about gardening in the fall, I am super proud of you because this has been just an awful year. I mean, last year wasn't great either. So if you started last year and then you're, we're hoping this year would be better, I am so sorry. It has just been a really, really rough time to be a gardener. I'm hoping this year is, I guess it's El Nino. Um, which is supposed to be, you know, the worst. And then I think it started in like June or May. Um, so it's supposed to be the worst. And then hopefully maybe next year is a little milder. We'll see. Um, sometimes these El Ninos last 12 months. Sometimes they last longer. I don't really understand the science. I just know that um, this is hopefully a really bad year and next year won't be nearly so bad. We'll see. Um, but uh, I definitely would encourage you if you're thinking about it, this is a great time to start a fall garden. You can start some lettuce seeds, things like that here in the near future. I'll be showing a video on that. I'm gonna probably start some celery too. I love having celery. And if not, there are probably tons of seed starts at a local nursery. There may not be at Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. I don't know, I haven't checked. Um, let me know if they are, but you'll probably find uh, seed starts at nurseries and things like that. It won't be the huge selection there is in the spring. It's just not as popular, but there's definitely things out there. I know I've seen some pepper plants and some tomato plants and some herbs for sure at HEB. Uh, if nothing else, start some herbs. This is a great time to start them. A lot of them will survive the winter, especially if you put them in a pot and bring them in when it freezes. You'll have beautiful herbs all winter long and all summer or all, uh, all next spring ready to go. You won't even have to wait on them. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you get started on uh, your fall garden soon. It's mid-September. This is the time to get started. The weather has finally turned. You got this. Um, also, I know it's silly, but please like and subscribe my video. Um, my husband keeps telling me I need to say that um, because that gets the channel out there. And uh, my goal is to help as many uh, Southerners or people in hot climates as possible kind of get going and uh, figure out how to deal with this hot, hot climate we've been having. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.